Good morning, friends, and welcome to another beautiful day here in Italy. Today I am in Rome, and I am enjoying a walk uh, to my hotel. I'm leaving one hotel and I'm going to another, but I thought it might be a really nice moment for you to come with me just for a little bit. It's a Sunday morning, and I'm obviously sounding pretty sleepy because I am still a little sleepy, but what a beautiful day. Uh, we have blue skies, and today is the first day of spring or tomorrow is the first day of spring but anyway we're after a very long winter we're finally heading to spring and I thought we could start off uh, spring the right way and have a nice uh, hopeful beautiful walk through uh, Rome so come along with me uh, I am here in near Piazza Navona this is Santa Maria della Pace let me turn around and show you in a second here we go so Santa Maria della Pace is really close to the Pantheon or to uh, Piazza Navona but many people miss it. It's a beautiful little jewel box church and it is connected to the cloisters of Bramante and Bramante if you remember your history is one of the architects of St. Peter's so he designed a cloister the entry is right there uh, and that is where the cloister for the church used to be. Now it's not a, clo a cloister anymore it's an exhibition space so they have contemporary art here uh, pretty often they had a Banksy exhibition here in the past, but it's a beautiful little corner of Rome that many people miss. You can see Santa Maria della Pace is made with that beautiful white travertine stone. That's the same thing the Colosseum is made of, and who knows, maybe it's literally the same thing the Colosseum is made of. They recycled a lot of stones that broke off of there. So, Rome is busy. Oh my goodness. It was so packed last night. I was trying to talk to my kids while I was walking through town and it was really, really crowded. Uh, but the weekends are like this, and especially this weekend. This weekend is a special celebration. It's the Festa San Giovanni, which is Italian Father's Day. So uh, they celebrate San Giovanni and they do so by going on a little weekend excursion and by eating uh, pastries. They have these lovely little pastries filled with cream that are special just to this particular holiday. So, just come with me for a little stroll here. Many people out uh, because they're done with mass. Oh, look at this cool old Renault. These streets surrounding the Pantheon are some of the most characteristic and colorful of Rome. I love uh, the street of Via de Coronari. I think I might have taken you walking that once before. Cute little shops with pizza and coffee. Gorgeous light this morning. Rome always has the most beautiful light. Up ahead, this building that you can see here, that's where I was staying last night. Uh, when I have a night in between tours, I like to experiment and try out different uh, hotels. Oh, by the way, quickly, Farmacia, and here they're doing uh, COVID tests. So that's for travelers, especially, that need a COVID test to go home. But also, if you are concerned you have COVID, you can go there, and they're very inexpensive. It's about uh, 15 or 20 euro. So uh, as I was saying, when I have just a couple of days between tours, I like to try and uh, check out other hotels either just for my own hotel recommendations or for potentially tours. So this is what I tried out. Uh, was this hotel up here? It's called Eich Boromini Palace. And it wasn't actually that much. I think it was about 150 euros, which is pretty reasonable. So there's the entrance there. Just a lovely, lovely little neighborhood. It's very busy at night though. I don't think I'd recommend staying here on a Saturday <laughs> unless you like party. The party lifestyle. So let's just go on a little stroll here. I'm starting my Rome staycation today. So I'm going to be meeting my travelers at 4 p.m. today and we're going to start with a little stroll to show you some of my favorite back corners of Rome. So if you like my little walks, you can do it with me in person. I'm going to be doing this one again next year. I'm not sure when, but we'll have the dates out uh, around Easter. My goodness, it is extremely, extremely busy today. I haven't seen this many people 
in Piazza Navona in two years. <laughs> Ah, uh, Trace Scavini. This is where, when I was in college, I used to always come and get this tartufo. It was $5 back then, which seemed like all the money in the world. It's 8 euros now, something like that. It's a big ball of chocolate ice cream covered in chocolate chips with some cream on top, and it's the classic sweet to bring your kids to have. You know, most of these restaurants seem pretty tacky and touristy, uh, but there are a couple of good ones, and I, I promise I'm going to write this stuff up. So, I know a lot of you have asked me for recommendations specifically for hotels and restaurants, and I, I'm sorry, but I can't get to everybody's emails. Also, you can uh, actually hire me or one of my colleagues to do travel planning for you, uh, because that is a lot of our time. But I am working on city guides. Those are going to be available first to my Patreon members that will have all of my recommendations and walking tours and hopefully a lot more. So that's in process. Let's see how long it takes me to do it. but it'll have a lot of the information that I talk about. So don't worry about it, we'll have it available eventually. So up there, that is where I had breakfast, <laughs> which is just crazy. So looking out for interesting hotel deals. I mean, traveling in March is amazing. Normally I'm sure that hotel room went for, was, goes for more than 300 euros, but because I'm here in March and it's still pretty quiet in Rome, I got a screaming deal. This is Sant'Agnese next door by, of course, the very famous architect Borromini. And Borromini is one of my favorite architects because he sort of broke rules when he was working in the 1600s. While Bernini was very polite and geometric and did things the way he was supposed to, Borromini was really a rule breaker. And he didn't like uh, 90 degree angles, let's just say it that way. He loved flowing interior spaces. Uh, moving lots of columns all over the place, so lots of movement in his architecture. And then, of course, his great competitor, Bernini, made this sculpture to hold up uh, this obelisk. The obelisk is an original Egyptian fake. It actually was commissioned by the Romans, but in ancient times. And underneath the obelisk, look how there's a hole. And maybe that seems kind of funny. I mean, right there. That was done by the artist to just sort of show, oh, it's not so heavy, right? It's an architectural trick, because that's what these Baroque artists are all about, architectural tricks. It's the Fountain of the Four Rivers, which uh, represented the four known continents at the time. Obviously, we know now there are more continents, but they didn't back then. Of course, the big story about this one is that this one was done with this scowl looking at the church across the street as a commentary on... Uh, Bernini's rival's architecture, but that can't be because this was done before the church. So it's a great tour guide story, though. Okay, let's just kind of have a little stroll and see what else is going on today. I love these new garbage cans that they put out in Rome. These are new as of maybe last year. I know that that's maybe a silly thing to admire, but <laughs> they, they let the custodians see if they need to be emptied. And they're also bomb proof and all of that kind of good stuff but it's nice to see that they have garbage cans because some places do not have them at all street musicians setting up it's not quite time for things to start yet because it's sunday morning and theoretically people are in church Lots of people using bicycles these days in Rome, which is such a delight to see. It's fun, although if you've got a lot of fillings in your teeth like I do, not maybe your favorite activity because it is shaky, shaky, shaky. It's the Neptune Fountain. This is the Brazilian Embassy, also known as Palazzo Pamphili, and Pamphili was the name of one of the famous families of Rome that had a pope. And over here, the Museum of Rome is hosting a Klimt exhibition, which I popped by yesterday, but it looked like it was pretty sold out, so I'm going to try to go this week. But here's a little secrety thing I wanted to show you. Look, in the vestibule of the Museo di Roma is a little bistro. And right now it's okay looking, but at night they had it all lit up and it was just 
glorious. What a romantic place to have dinner. Here are all these electric bikes here in Rome. Uh, with U I think the Uber app, you can rent these. I like them. Uh, they're not all in working order. <laughs> so you have to be ready to hop off. And they're not free. They cost, if you ride them across town, they're going to be three or four euros. So it's still cheaper to take the bus. But the bicycles can be quite fun. I think of it more as an activity. And we're heading out towards the Campo. I hope you all are having a lovely Sunday. I love the melting paint. Look at this. That is so typical of Rome. That's what Rome looked like everywhere when I was a student. So there's a few buildings that have been left unrestored that I very much appreciate. I'm sure they could use some renewal, but oh, look at this. This is a very old fashioned shop. Selling hats. In the 90s, everybody wore hats. <laughs> it was sort of like something in the past. And oh, look, they're, they're doing the carciofi. It's artichoke season. Rome is very famous for its artichokes in the Jewish style, which is uh, kind of fried. I like artichokes in all the ways, though. And here we are out at the Corso. Corso Vittorio Emanuele is one of the very few kind of straightish <laughs> streets, straight being relative, and the main drag from the train station to St. Peter's. Uh, let's see. Look at, I just love it, admiring life, you know? It's so much fun just to people watch. So masks now are not required when you're outdoors. They are still required in museums, and they are still required uh, on public transportation and in most buildings. And they do require the FPP2 or FFP2 or N95 masks, which I'm not personally a fan of. I you feel like I'm suffocating, but there we are. This is busy, unbelievable. This is a classic bakery here. They always had a mortadella. Oh yeah, there you go. A mortadella in the doorway. I have often wondered how many years that same mortadella has been there. Since I was in my 20s for sure. <laughs> Over here on the corner beyond that, that gelato shop. This used to be a rusticeria. Now it's just, I don't even know what. Oh, a pizza shop. This used to sell chickens, roasted chickens, and lovely side dishes, and I ate most of my college meals there. Still barber shops, look at that. Really old-fashioned barber shop, it still has a barber shop. So Rome really hangs on to its, its heritage and its past. Uh, that's Palazzo Cancelleria. You can see the flag of the Vatican there with the yellow. That means it's Vatican property. And that's the law courts of the Vatican. Here's Bar Farnese. You might have seen me having a, a drink here with Andrew and my kids a couple weeks ago. They're having their weekly closing, very old fashioned bar, which I love. I love the old school Roman bars with the wooden paneling. And up ahead on Palazzo Farnese, if you look, you can see that funny artwork by the French artist that covers the front of the building that looks like a cutaway. I showed you guys that when I was here two or three weeks ago. And we've got the market in, Piet in Campo di Fiori today. Now, between you and me and a wall, let me tell you, the Campo de Fiori market I find a little depressing to be honest. When I was a student, it was food. It was mushrooms, fish, meat, uh, cheese, all the things. Now it's touristic and it's a bunch of garbage. There are still a few people who do um, fresh vegetables and, and fruit, but as you can see, they're uh, turning into mostly tacky clothes, touristic fruit 
drinks and things like that. Look at these tour groups. This is fascinating. They're Italians. <laughs> we don't have the big American tour groups anymore. Oh. Let's see housewares and things. These are these are not things for locals. These are things for tourists, which is kind of a bummer. We have Bruno, who's looking up at it all, still somewhat disgusted. He has a good disgusted face. There he is. Oops, sorry. Yeah, he's just kind of over all of it, isn't he? And here, here's a cheese shop. That's nice. But yeah, you can see almost no real vendors here. It is a Sunday, that's true. But these are all ticky-tacky things for tourists to take home with them. And it's, it's too bad, says the, the grumpy old lady. Oh, hey, look, there is a veg seller over there. That's good. All right, we're going to cut over, I think, in this direction here. Palazzo del Bichone, which is where the University of Washington runs their programs, and this is where I studied in college, as you probably know. This is a fun little location for a hotel, Hotel Campo de Fiori. I haven't stayed there in years, so I don't know if it's any good. I'll have to take a look, but what a fun place. So we're going to do the little Sato Passaggio. Here's um, Pancrancio. I've eaten here a number of times. It's okay, it's pretty good. What's especially fun is if you ask politely, they will take you underground to see the ruins of the theater of Pompey, and that's where Julius Caesar was assassinated. So, kind of a twofer on this one. See, they've got the history, and you can see this is the theater, and this is where the restaurant is located. But this is where Julius Caesar was assassinated because they were holding the Senate meetings there at the time, which is cool. Ugh. Menu Caesar, menu Brutus. Oh, come on. That's a little cheesy. Anyway, here we go. Let's go through our Sato Passaggio. Uh, some tours here, I guess, running still. When I passed through here recently, this was a, right here, a little shop, <laughs> which was so cute. So you never know what you're going to find. Backside of the little Sato Passaggio, you can see the curving of the building, which tells you exactly what was underneath in the past. And over here is Paola's and Sant'Andrea della Valle. Paola's, of course, is working at dinner tonight. And here is a typical Roman parking lot. I've always loved this, the balcony up there, I think it is. There's a, a lady who lives there and she's collected her groceries with a basket in the past. Buongiorno. Oh, ciao. <laughs> Come stai? Ho uh, oh, un piccolo gruppetto stasera per dieci, ok? Va bene, sì, ho prenotato con Paola, ma... Ah, sì, sì, no, no, va, va, va bene. <laughs> sì, 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 uh, due settimane fa, ok? So ci vediamo alle sette più o meno, ok? Grazie. Ciao. Ok. Hope you guys don't mind if you're coming along on my errands with me. You can see what it's like to be me for a <laughs> half hour. <laughs> Lovely, huh? So all of these funny streets that are uh, kind of crooked or the buildings that are not built in a square, you know that they, they're like that because of what's underneath them. Because of course, 15 feet underneath us is probably the Roman level, 15-ish feet. So all of these buildings are sitting on top of the ruins of former built Roman buildings. Up ahead is the Hotel Smeraldo, which uh, I've stayed at before with groups. 
also interesting location. I think it's really fun to get away from this train station area or, you know, maybe Piazza di Spagna, all the real typical places, and go into these back streets. Our hotel for our room tour is in a really unusual location. And I love that because you get a much more uh, real feel for things. So up ahead, do you see the line? <laughs> that is Rochely. Now Rochely is a really well-respected um, baker and wine shop. Uh, my friend Lindsay, she is the co-owner of uh, the Remesa Rochely where we're gonna have our cooking class this week, which is really exciting. But look how popular it is. They just remodeled. They, I think, are going to take over this space as well. I'm not sure. But everybody out having their pizza? So on this, you can see that there's some cool-looking shops here. Oh, I like that. Um, that's because we are approaching one of the more funky shopping streets here in Rome. And there's another Rochely right there. That's the deli, so you can get your fresh baked goods at one Rochely and come to the Salumeria and you can get wine and cheese. Just have a little peek in here. Ooh, look at the prosciuttos. Look at those. Beautiful things. Okay. Look at all those things you can buy. I think I'll be taking home some oil and some condiments and things. Apparently a very popular restaurant here. Oh, it's a Rochely restaurant. <laughs> yeah. They have become quite a thing. I remember when they were just like a bakery. But good on them. They're really doing a good job of preserving Roman food culture. So now we're heading over to Via Arenula, which is the dividing line between this neighborhood of the Campo dei Fiori and the Jewish ghetto. So why not? Let's walk through there. Didn't really intend to take you guys with me the whole way, but it's just too pretty. I hate to not bring you along. <laughs> Rochely delivering. That's funny. I love Rome. Listen to that. You can hear music. It's just always frizzante. There really is no place quite like it, is there? Well, a little music for our stroll today. Oh, flowers. I'll probably stop and get some flowers uh, because these are fun to have in your hotel room. We're staying for a full week, so why not dress up your hotel room? with a little festivity with some beautiful flowers. These are the flowers for uh, hydrangeas for Easter. Already they've got them out. Okay, we got a green. If I sound a little out of breath, it's because I've got my backpack on. <laughs> Cobblestones of Rome, which I love. San Pietrini, that's what they're called, and I, I love them. But unfortunately, they're not great for cars. So a lot of streets in Rome in the last year or two, they've started digging them up and putting in asphalt. It's kind of tragic for the character of Rome, but really more practical. All right, now we're passing through the ghetto. I think one of my projects someday, I'm gonna just retire from tour guiding for a hiatus and just write a book about walks in Rome. <laughs> All the fun itineraries, because every day you can take a wander and do something completely different and see something different. Uh, look at this. What a cute little place. People are already having their glass of wine. It's almost noon. Burgers. Burgers have become very popular in Italy in the last 10 years. 
And they make these sort of like um, fancy pants burgers. They're not like regular hamburgers. I'm not sure how I feel about them. They're a little too much meat generally. Kosher, because of course this is the Jewish ghetto. So this is the time of year when you want to come to this area and get the, um, the Roman artichokes. It is just so nice to see everybody out and about and living life after two years, you know? Huh. What's this about? Oh, cakes. Everybody, everybody's lining up for capes. Oh, and she's throwing kisses. Look at this. So, apartment buildings. But look what's at the base. <laughs> it's from a Roman artifact of some kind, maybe an arch or something. They've just recycled it. So lots of cake sellers. They are ready for crowds today. It's a little surprising. So we're going to cut over this way to the portico of Octavia. It's nice that they keep these streets pedestrian because they're very popular. So, Cucina uh, Judaico Romanesca. So, here's what they have on the menu here. Taverna del Ghetto is a good choice. You see the Carchafo alla Judea, fried artichokes Jewish style. So, lots of typical things, but some other interesting things lamb Jewish style, veal meatballs. So, some good choices. Oh, beautiful. Oh, wish you were here. What a beautiful day. And it's about, I would say, maybe 50 or 60 degrees out. 60 degrees out. Jewish antiques. So, here we go. And this is up ahead, the portico of Octavia. She was the sister of Augustus. His name was Octavian and hers is Octavia. And this is uh, dedicated to her memory. Because apparently he was very close to her. Ah, you can see this beautiful Cipollino marble. Do you see how it's kind of peeling? It's like the skin of onions. Gorgeous. So there's the street level, you can see. Here it's a little closer, it's only maybe about 10 feet. Oh, I love that. What a beautiful little balcony right there. So there you go, just a little taste of a walk through Rome this morning. I'm going to head out to a noisy area along the uh, Lungo Tevere, so it won't be as pretty. But thanks for walking with me this morning uh, through Rome. Hope you're having a lovely Sunday wherever you are. I'm going to start today at 4 o'clock with my Rome group, so I'll be back at the end of the day with a little update on how that's going. But it's going to be a lot of fun. We have uh, 9 or 10 people joining us, and it's going to be a fabulous week of things that you've never done, even if you've been to Rome before. So it's going to be uh, enjoying the Domus Aurea, for example. We're going to be going uh, on a day trip out to the Castelli Romani to see uh, Castel Gandolfo. Uh, lots and lots of wonderful treats in store uh, that are, are best for people that have already seen the Vatican and the Colosseum. We're going to see everything else. So uh, we'll see you again later this week. Ciao for now. Buona Domenica.